Hi viewers, welcome back to one more other lecture session from this channel. So in this session we will be studying regarding nature of bond linking in monomers to build up a specific polymer and then after we will be studying regarding structure of enzymes and as well as the chemical reactions in detail. So here as I have already mentioned you one specific polypeptide chain it is composed of many number of amino acids. So here once when many number of amino acids once when they aggregate together here it lead to the formation of a specific polypeptide chain or protein. So here one amino acid it is capable to remain in association with the neighboring amino acid by taking the advantage of a specific covalent bond which is nothing but what peptide bond. And here during the formation of the peptide bond one molecule of water it successfully releases by the means of a specific process which is nothing but what dehydration. Is it clear? So let me write it on the board. Proteins. Proteins are the polymers of amino acids. Amino acids. And here peptide bond. Peptide bond is responsible is responsible for the formation of polypeptide chain for the formation of polypeptide chain right and here during the formation of peptide bond, one molecule of water it successfully releases by the means of a specific process which is nothing but what dehydration. So look at here. So here it is one amino acid. And here it is the other amino acid. So in between the two amino acids, peptide bond formation it takes place. And here during the formation of peptide bond, one molecule of water it successfully releases by the means of a specific process which is nothing but what? Dehydration. Dehydration, right? And here the peptide bond formation it is successfully catalyzed by taking the advantage of a specific enzyme which is nothing but what peptidyl transferase. Peptidyl transferase it is the enzyme which is responsible for the formation of peptide bond in between the two successive amino acids. So let me write it here. Peptidyl transferase. Peptidyl transferase catalyzes the peptide bond formation. peptide bond formation right so here likewise one specific protein even if we consider one specific polysaccharide one specific polysaccharide it is composed of many number of monosaccharide residues is it clear and here during the formation of one specific polysaccharide one molecule of water it successfully releases by the means of a specific process which is nothing but what dehydration is it clear so let me write it here Polysaccharides consists of many number of monosaccharides, many number of monosaccharides. And likewise, one specific polysaccharide and even likewise one specific protein one nucleic acid it is composed of many number of monomeric units which are nothing but what nucleotides once when many number of nucleotides once when they aggregate together here it lead to the formation of one specific nucleic acid and here the specific nucleic acid it can be of either DNA or RNA nucleic acid is composed of many number of nucleotides 
many number of nucleotides so here prior to the explanation of how one specific nucleotide it is capable to remain in association with the neighboring nucleotide at first let us we have a look regarding the term known as nucleotide so here what is nucleotide here nucleotide it is an association of three specific components which are nothing but what nitrogenous base pentose sugar and the other one is phosphate group so let me write it here nucleotide it is composed of nitrogenous base and the other one is pentose sugar pentose sugar and the other one is phosphate group so here once when all these three components once when they aggregate together here it lead to the formation of what one specific nucleotide and here all the nucleotides they are capable to aggregate together in order to form a specific nucleotide nucleic acid by taking the advantage of a specific bond which is nothing but what phosphodiester bond is it clear all the nucleotides they are capable to aggregate together in order to form a specific nucleic acid by taking the advantage of a specific bond which is nothing but what phosphodiester bond phosphodiester bond phosphodiester bond catalyzes the formation of nucleic acid nucleic acid right and now let us we have a look how one specific nucleotide it is capable to remain in association with the neighboring nucleotide by taking the advantage of the specific ester bond is it clear so let me arrange the things here so as i already mentioned you nucleic acid is composed of many number of nucleotides nucleic acid is composed of many number of nucleotides many number of nucleotides and here all the nucleotides they are capable to aggregate together by taking the advantage of ester bond is it clear and if we look at how one specific nucleotide it is capable to remain in association with the neighboring nucleotide by taking the advantage of ester bond easily we can understand so look at here a stands for what adenine adenine is the nitrogenous base to the specific nitrogenous base a pentose sugar it successfully attaches here so here once when the nitrogenous base in association with the pentose sugar here it is termed as what nucleoside nucleoside in association with the phosphate group here it is termed as what nucleotide so here it is termed as what nucleotide and here the specific pentose sugar which is a part of the specific nucleotide in case of dna here it is termed as what deoxyribose so here why it is termed as deoxyribose because the particular pentose sugar it contains hydroxyl group only at the third carbon but at the second carbon instead of having hydroxyl group here there is an availability of only one single hydrogen atom so the reason why here it is termed as what deoxyribose that means lack of oxygen atom at the second carbon to the specific hydroxyl group which is present at the third carbon a specific phosphate moiety it successfully attaches here by taking the advantage of ester bond ester bond right and as we all know ester bond it is very weaker in comparison with ether bonds now here the specific phosphate moiety it acts as a mediator in between the third carbon of the pentose sugar of the first nucleotide and as well as the fifth carbon of the pentose sugar of the next succeeding nucleotide so look at here so here t stands for what thymine thymine is a nitrogenous base and here it is nothing but what the pentose sugar and it is the fifth carbon
is it clear in between the third carbon of the pentose sugar of the first nucleotide and as well as the fifth carbon of the pentose sugar of the next succeeding nucleotide here the specific phosphate moiety is present and as we all know dna is double stranded right so here it is one single stranded dna and if we look at here there is an availability of the other single stranded dna so here always a adenine it base pairs with thymine and here it is nothing but what the pentose sugar pentose sugar right and again the specific phosphate moiety it acts as a mediator in between the two successive nucleotides two successive nucleotides right and again thymine it base pairs with adenine So here as there is an availability of ester bond on both the sides here it is termed as what phosphodiester bond phosphodiester bond is responsible for the formation of nucleic acid phosphodiester bond is responsible for the formation of nucleic acid formation of nucleic acid right so here each of the single stranded dna it has many number of nitrogenous bases so here what are the various nitrogenous bases which are most commonly observed in case of one single stranded dna here the various nitrogenous bases they include atgc nitrogenous bases So here the various nitrogenous bases they include A, T, G, C. So always A it base pairs with T. Is it clear? In the same way T it base pairs with A. In the same way G it base pairs with C. And C it base pairs with G. So here the specific relationship through which the nitrogenous bases they are capable to undergo base pairing here it is termed as what? Complementary relationship. So let me write it here. Complementary relationship. So here by taking the advantage of complementary relationship, the particular nitrogenous bases, they are capable to undergo base pairing. And here in order to acquire the stability in between the two successive nitrogenous bases, here there is an availability of a specific non-covalent interaction which is nothing but what hydrogen bond. So here the strongest hydrogen bonding in between the two successive nitrogenous bases here it is observed in between G and C. Is it clear? In between G and C and as well as C and G here there is an availability of three hydrogen bonds and in comparing with G and C the weaker hydrogen bond it is observed in between A and T. In between A and T and T and A there is an availability of only two hydrogen bonds and in comparing with A and T and T and A the much more weaker hydrogen bond it is observed in between A and U in case of RNA. A and U. There is an availability of only one single hydrogen bond in case of RNA. So here nucleic acids they exhibit many of the secondary structures. Out of these many secondary structures the most widely accepted structure here it is nothing but what Watson Crick model. Is it clear? Watson Crick model. Watson Crick model. So, here why it is termed as Watson Crick model? Because for the very first time it was identified by James D. Watson and as well as Francis Crick. On behalf of the discovery, the particular model here it is termed as what? Watson Crick model. Is it clear? Now, let us we have a look. On the salient features of the particular Watson Crick model. So, here what are the various salient features which are most commonly observed in case of the Watson Crick model? So, let me arrange the things here. 
and and if we look at some of the salient features which are a part of the watson crick model so here basically dn is double stranded so here dn is double stranded and it resembles the shape of a twisted helical like structure so here one single stranded dna it proceeds in 5 prime to 3 prime polarity and the other single stranded dna it proceeds in 3 prime to 5 prime polarity and if we look at the pitch of the helix so here the pitch of the helix here it is nothing but what the height of one complete helical turn is it clear the height of one complete helical turn here it is nothing but what the pitch of the helix so here the pitch of the helix is 34 angstrom units so here always try to memorize one thing one nanometer 1 nanometer is equal to 10 angstrom units. So, in that case, 3.4 nanometers, 3.4 nanometers, it is equal to 34 angstrom units. So, here the pitch of the helix is 34 angstrom units are in other terms. Here we can consider it as 3.4 nanometers. Anything is same. And in addition to this, one complete helical turn, it contains nearly 10 nitrogenous base pairs on average. Is it clear? One complete helical turn, it contains nearly 10 nitrogenous base pairs on average. And in addition to this, one particular nitrogenous base pair, it is separated from the other nitrogenous base pair by a distance of 3.4 angstrom units. So, look at here. Three point four angstrom units. Then, in the same way, once when one particular nitrogenous base pair, when it successfully shifts from one particular ascent to the another ascent, or once when one particular nitrogenous base pair, when it shifts from one particular step to the another step, here the DNA stand it turns around thirty six degree. Is it clear? DNA stand turns around. turns around 36 degree from one particular step to another step to another step right and if we look at the diameter the diameter of the double stranded dna it is around 20 angstrom units it is around 20 angstrom units. So, here all these are the various salient features which are a part of the Watson Crick model. And here the specific Watson Crick model DNA, here it is termed as what? BDNA. BDNA. So, here BDNA is much more stable in comparison with ADNA and as well as ZDNA. In general, there are three types of DNAs and these include ADNA, BDNA and as well as ZDNA. In comparison with ADN and as well as ZDNA, BDNA it is much more stable. Much more stable in comparison with in comparison with ADNA and ZDNA. And then after we will be studying regarding dynamic state of body constituents and as well as concept of metabolism in detail. So, let me arrange the things here. And then after we will be studying regarding dynamic state of body constituents in case of living organism. So, here till now what we have studied or what we have learnt is all the living organisms they may be of plants, animals or protozoans they are composed of thousands of organic compounds or biomolecules. Is it clear? So, let me write it here. All living organisms, are composed of composed of thousands of organic compounds, organic compounds or biomolecules. biomolecules so here these specific organic compounds or biomolecules they are expressed in the means of molecules per cell or molecules per liter organic compounds
ആർ ബയോമോലിക്യൂൾസ് ആർ എക്സ്പ്രസ് ഇൻ ദ മീൻസ് ഓഫ് മോലിക്യൂൾസ് പെർ സെൽ ആൻഡ് ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് മോലിക്യൂൾസ് പെർ ലീറ്റർ and one of the remarkable feature which has made in accordance to these specific biomolecules here it is nothing but what turnover number so here all these organic compounds are biomolecules they has turnover number all the organic compounds are biomolecules biomolecules has turnover number so here what is the meaning of turnover number here so here the meaning of turnover number here it is nothing but what all these organic compounds are biomolecules they are capable to synthesize rapidly and even they are capable to transform from one particular form to another form by taking the advantage of what chemical transformations is it clear all these organic compounds are biomolecules they are capable to synthesize rapidly and even they are capable to transform from one particular form to another form by taking the advantage of chemical transformations so here for your better understanding let me give you some common examples which are most commonly observed in case of one particular living organism so here if we consider amino acid amino acid so here amino acid when it loses one molecule of carbon dioxide amino acid it successfully converts into what amine amine then in the same way if we consider one specific disaccharide disaccharide in the presence of certain hydrolytic enzymes they are capable to yield monosaccharides disaccharides in the presence of hydrolytic enzymes they yield monosaccharides then in the same way in the presence of certain enzymes one specific nucleotide it is capable to modify into another nucleotide is it clear so let me show it here so let us we assume it has the cytosine cytosine right so here cytosine in the presence of a specific enzyme which is nothing but cytidine deaminase cytidine deaminase it is capable to yield uracil is it clear cytosine in the presence of cytidine deaminase it is capable to yield uracil so look at here so here it is nothing but what uracil right so here in the presence of an enzyme termed as deaminase here the specific amino group which is a part of the cytosine it has successfully modified here is it clear here the specific amino group which is a part of the cytosine it has disappeared in case of uracil because of the presence of a specific enzyme which is nothing but what deaminase as the name itself suggests deaminase it is the enzyme which is responsible for removing the amino group so the reason why cytosine it successfully modifies into uracil is it clear so here all these chemical reactions which most commonly occur in case of one particular living organism here it is termed as what metabolism is it clear so let me write it here all the living organisms contains these chemical reactions chemical reactions which are termed as metabolism is it clear 
so here once when many number of metabolic reactions is it clear once when many number of chemical reactions are the metabolic reactions once when they occur in a systematic manner or in a programmed manner here it lead to the formation of what metabolic pathway is it clear one particular metabolic pathway metabolic pathway contains many number of many number of chemical reactions and all these chemical reactions they won't occur in an isolated manner is it clear all the chemical reactions which are a part of the metabolic pathway they won't occur in an isolated manner and here the specific metabolic pathway they can be of different types they can be of either circularized form or even they can be of either in linear form metabolic pathways metabolic pathways are of circularized form or linear form so here within one particular metabolic pathway what exactly happens is flowage of metabolites takes place is it clear within one particular metabolic pathway flowage of metabolites it successfully takes place for example glucose molecule when it undergoes oxidation it yields two molecules of pyruvic acid so here in order to turn into two molecules of pyruvic acid the specific glucose molecule it has to overcome nearly 10 metabolic reactions is it clear so let me show it here so let me arrange the things glucose molecule during glycolysis glucose molecule during glycolysis it is capable to yield two molecules of pyruvic acid pyruvic acid right so here in order to turn into two molecules of pyruvic acid the specific glucose molecule it has to overcome nearly 10 metabolic reactions so here during the formation of two molecules of pyruvic acid from one molecule of glucose flowage of metabolites takes place so here the specific flowage of metabolites it resembles the movement of automobiles on the surface of the road in accordance with the traffic signals in what way on the surface of the road automobiles they successfully move in accordance with the traffic signals in the same way within one particular metabolic pathway flowage of metabolites they take place likewise the automobiles on the surface of the road so here the specific flowage of metabolites in case of one particular metabolic pathway here it is termed as what dynamic state of body constituents in case of living organism is it clear flowage of metabolites in case of one particular metabolic pathway here it is termed as what dynamic state of body constituents in case of living organism so let me write it on the board flowage of metabolites is considered as dynamic state of body constituents so here in order to regulate the flows of metabolites in case of one particular metabolic pathway two different properties they play an important role so here two different properties they govern the flows of metabolites in case of one particular metabolic pathway so here what are the two different properties here one is rate and the other one is direction rate and the other one is direction rate and direction they are responsible for regulating the flows of metabolites in case of one particular metabolic pathway is it clear then in the same way all these chemical reactions in case of one particular metabolic pathway they are organized in the presence of a specific biocatalyst which is nothing but what enzymes enzymes they are responsible for organizing all the metabolic reactions for example during the glycolysis glucose molecule it successfully converts into what glucose 6 phosphate 
So here in order to turn into glucose 6-phosphate, the specific glucose molecule it takes the advantage of a specific enzyme which is nothing but what? Glucokinase or hexokinase. So here by taking the advantage of glucokinase or hexokinase, here glucose molecule it successfully turns into or it successfully modifies into glucose 6-phosphate. Here the specific enzymes, they act as biocatalyst. In the presence of enzymes, the rate of the chemical reaction it successfully enhances so that the specific product which successfully forms it occurs in so accurate manner. Is it clear? For example, carbon dioxide. So let me arrange the thing here. Carbon dioxide in the presence of carbonic anhydrase when it dissolves in water. Carbon dioxide when it dissolves in water. In the presence of carbonic anhydrase, it is capable to yield carbonic acid. Carbonic acid, right? So here the specific reaction, here it is catalyzed by taking the advantage of a specific biocatalyst, which is nothing but what? Carbonic anhydrase. Is it clear? So in this way, all these metabolic reactions, they are successfully catalyzed by taking the advantage of a specific biocatalyst, which is nothing but what? Enzymes. So enzymes are responsible for enhancing the rate of the chemical reaction or enzymes are responsible for increasing the speed of the biological reaction. And then after we will be studying regarding concept of metabolism. So here, what is metabolism? So let me arrange the things here. And then after we will be studying regarding concept of metabolism. So here what is metabolism? So here metabolism, here it is nothing but what? Catabolism and as well as anabolism, it is together termed as what? Metabolism. So here the particular metabolic pathways which most commonly occur in case of one particular living organism, they are responsible for the conversion of simpler molecules into complex molecules and even they are also responsible for the conversion of complex molecules into simpler molecules. Is it clear? Metabolic pathways are responsible are responsible for the conversion of conversion of simpler to complex molecule and as well as complex to simpler molecules simpler molecules right so here in order to understand this particular concept here we can take the advantage of some common examples acetic acid so let me write it here acetic acid it is a simpler molecule. Simpler molecule. So here acetic acid, it is capable to convert into complex molecule, which is nothing but what? Cholesterol. Cholesterol. Which is nothing but C27H46O. So here simpler molecule, it is capable to convert into complex molecule by taking the advantage of metabolic pathway. Then in the same way, Complex molecules, they are capable to convert into simpler molecules. For example, glucose. Glucose, it is a complex molecule. So here the complex molecule, it is capable to convert into simpler molecules, which is nothing but what? Two molecules of pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid, right? Which is nothing but the simpler molecule. So here the very first pathway which is nothing but conversion of simpler molecule into complex molecule. Here it is nothing but what? Anabolic pathway. Anabolic pathway. So always the anabolic pathways, they are energy dependent pathways. Energy dependent pathway. That means they require energy. For example, assembly of amino acids in order to form one specific protein, it is not a spontaneous process, it is a non-spontaneous process because it requires energy, it is an endergonic reaction. Is it clear? All the anabolic pathways, they are energy dependent pathways because they require energy. 
Then in the same way, conversion of complex molecule into simpler molecule, here it is termed as what? Catabolic pathway. Catabolic pathway, right? So here, catabolic pathway, it is not an energy dependent pathway. Energy independent pathway. Energy independent pathway. So here both the catabolic pathway and as well as anabolic pathway, it is together termed as what? Metabolic pathway. So here we need to understand one key point. Living organisms, they have learned the capability to trap the energy. Is it clear? In case of skeletal muscle, once when the specific glucose molecule, when it undergoes oxidation, it yields lactic acid. Is it clear? So here living organisms, they have learned the capability to trap the energy and even living organisms, they are aware of how to store the energy by forming the chemical bonds. After trapping the energy, living organisms, they are capable to store the energy by forming the chemical bonds. Then in the same way, when the living organisms, when they are in the vicinity of energy or when they require energy, living organisms, they are capable to break up the specific chemical bonds and they are capable to obtain the energy in the means of a specific energy currency, which is nothing but what? ATP. So here, by taking the advantage of energy in the means of ATP, all the living organisms, they are capable to perform one specific work. So let me write it here. Catabolic pathway and as well as anabolic pathway it is together termed as what? Metabolic pathway. So here during anabolic pathway energy is used but whereas in case of catabolic pathway energy is not used catabolic pathway it is an energy independent pathway during the catabolic pathway energy is not utilized energy is liberated so here living organisms they are capable living organisms are capable to acquire energy to acquire energy in the means of an energy currency which is nothing but what adenosine triphosphate then in your higher classes you will be studying regarding how the specific living organisms they are capable to trap the energy and what are the various strategies they have evolved and how the specific living organisms they are capable to store the energy by forming the chemical bonds and how the specific living organisms they are capable to obtain the energy by breaking the chemical bonds in your higher classes is it clear and then after we will be studying regarding enzymes so here what are enzymes so here enzymes are nothing but what they are proteinaceous in nature they are chemically composed of amino acids so let me arrange the things here and then after we will be studying regarding enzymes so here what are enzymes so here most commonly enzymes are proteinaceous in nature Enzymes are proteinaceous in nature. Is it clear? They are chemically composed of amino acids. So here most of the biological enzymes they are proteinaceous in nature. But there are specific nucleic acids which are having the enzymatic activity or catalytic activity. So here the specific nucleic acid which is having the enzymatic activity or catalytic activity here it is termed as what? Ribozyme. Is it clear? So let me write it on the board. Nucleic acid which has enzymatic activity, enzymatic activity, here it is termed as what? Ribozyme. Is it clear? Ribose nucleic acid which is having the enzymatic activity, here it is termed as what? Ribozyme. Is it clear? So here we need to understand one key point. So nearly all the enzymes, likewise the proteins, they are having different structural levels. What are those? Primary structure, secondary structure and as well as tertiary structure. So let me write it on the board. All the biological enzymes, biological enzymes has 
different structural levels different structural levels and these include primary structure secondary structure and as well as tertiary structure so here once when the specific biological enzyme when it acquires the tertiary structure or the three dimensional structure here the specific enzymes they are capable to fold so accurately and the specific enzymes they acquire a specific crevice like structure or pocket like structure which is nothing but what active site is it clear biological enzymes enzymes during tertiary structure tertiary structure acquires crevice like structure crevice or pocket like structure pocket like structure right so here the specific crevice or pocket like structure here it is termed as what active site active site is it clear for you so let me show it on the board so here let us we assume it as the enzyme right the folded polypeptide chain during the tertiary structure so here the particular polypeptide chain it acquires a specific crevice like structure or pocket like structure which is nothing but what active site so here it is nothing but what the active site to the specific active site of the enzyme a specific compound which is nothing but what substrate it successfully binds here so once when the specific substrate when it successfully binds to the active site of the enzyme now here it lead to the formation of what enzyme substrate complex then after the enzyme substrate complex it is capable to yield the enzyme product complex is it clear so let me show it on the board so here it is nothing but what the substrate so here once when the specific substrate when it successfully binds to the active site of the enzyme by taking the advantage of certain non covalent interactions like hydrogen bond now here it lead to the formation of what enzyme substrate complex enzyme substrate complex it is capable to yield enzyme product complex then after here it lead to the production of one specific product product formation takes place product formation takes place right so nearly all the biological enzymes they are organic compounds is it clear nearly all the enzymes they are organic compounds they are composed of certain organic elements so the reason why all the biological enzymes they are temperature specific all the biological enzymes they are capable to work so accurately only at certain temperature and here the temperature it ranges around 40 to 45 degree celsius so let me write it here all the biological enzymes enzymes are temperature specific so here only at 40 to 45 degree celsius the particular enzymes they are capable to work so accurately at extreme temperature the particular biological enzymes which are organic in nature they lose their biological activity or they become denatured is it clear but here we need to understand one key point in general the specific biological reactions they are catalyzed by taking the advantage of a specific biocatalyst which is nothing but what enzymes enzymes are organic compounds and in addition to this some of the chemical reactions they are catalyzed by taking the advantage of certain inorganic catalyst inorganic catalyst they are not organic compounds they are inorganic compounds so the reason why the specific inorganic catalyst they are capable to work so accurately even at extreme temperature and in addition to this here we need to understand one key point as i have already mentioned you all the biological enzymes they are temperature specific as all the biological enzymes they are organic compounds they are temperature specific they are capable to work so accurately only at certain temperature but here there are certain enzymes which are most commonly isolated from specific thermophilic bacteria or extremophilic bacteria which is nothing but what thermus aquaticus is it clear thermophilic bacteria 
or in other terms here we can consider it as extremophile extremophile so here the specific thermophilic bacteria here it is nothing but what thermus aquaticus thermus aquaticus from the specific thermus aquaticus a specific enzyme it is successfully isolated here and here it is nothing but what tag polymerase tag polymerase so here the specific tag polymerase it is most commonly used in case of the polymerase chain reaction in general in order to synthesize the specific nucleic acid during the replication mechanism dna polymerase is used is it clear but the specific dna polymerase it is an organic compound here the specific enzyme it is capable to work so accurately only at the specific temperature but here during the pcr cycle or during the polymerase chain reaction very extreme temperature or very high temperature is used during the extreme temperature or high temperature the specific dna polymerase enzyme it loses its biological activity so the reason why instead of taking the advantage of dna polymerase enzyme under in vitro conditions during the pcr cycle a specific enzyme termed as tag polymerase is used and here the specific tag polymerase it is obtained from a specific thermophilic bacteria or from the extremophilic bacteria which is nothing but what thermus aquaticus so here the specific tag polymerase enzyme it is capable to work at extreme temperatures so it is an organic compound it is capable to work at extreme temperature because it is isolated from extreme hot conditions is it clear and then after we will be studying regarding enzymes and as well as their chemical reactions so here what are the various chemical reactions which are governed by taking the advantage of these particular enzymes so let me arrange the things here and then after we will be studying regarding chemical reactions so here what are chemical reactions so in general the specific chemical compounds they are capable to undergo chemical transformation by taking the advantage of two different strategies so here the very first strategy here it is nothing but what change in the shape of the compounds change in the shape of compounds without breaking chemical bonds without breaking chemical bonds chemical bonds so here it is a type of physical process physical process right and the other physical process here it is nothing but what change in the states of matter change in the states of matter so here it is nothing but what it is the another physical process physical process so here in order to understand this particular concept let me give you some common examples so here if we consider ice cubes and if we place the specific ice cubes in water the specific ice cubes they are capable to dissolve in water then in the same way if we consider water and if we boil the specific water water turns into water vapor so here it is nothing but what change in the states of matter so here it is also a type of physical process so here in all these cases change in the states of matter it is because of what breaking of chemical bonds and as well as forming of chemical bonds is it clear chemical transformation chemical transformation is because of is because of breaking of breaking and forming of chemical bonds breaking and forming of chemical bonds is it clear so here in order to understand the specific chemical transformation let me give you one common example so here barium hydroxide is it clear barium hydroxide in the presence of sulfuric acid it is capable to yield barium sulfate and as well as two molecules of water 
barium sulfate and as well as two molecules of water initially in case of the specific reactant here there is no availability of water but whereas in case of the product two molecules of water it is produced because of what the specific chemical transformation and here the specific reaction here it is catalyzed by taking the advantage of inorganic catalyst inorganic catalyst so here likewise the chemical transformation in case of the inorganic reaction even the specific chemical transformation they are observed in case of organic reaction for example starch starch in the presence of certain hydrolytic enzymes like amylolytic enzyme amylolytic enzyme it is capable to yield monosaccharides it is capable to yield monosaccharides is it clear for you so here the rate of the physical process or the chemical process it can be defined as the number of product molecules which were formed per unit of time so let me write it on the board rate of physical process physical or chemical process chemical process can be defined as can be defined as the number of product molecules number of product molecules which were formed per unit of time which were formed per unit of time so here rate is nothing but what delta p by delta t rate is nothing but what delta p by delta t is it clear so here the number of product molecules which were formed per unit of time so here it is nothing but what rate so here the rate of the chemical reaction it can be elucidated if the direction is specified is it clear rate of the chemical reaction rate of chemical reaction can be elucidated if direction is specified if direction is specified right that means enzymes they are least concerned about the direction is it clear enzymes they won't bother about direction enzymes they are always they are responsible for enhancing the rate of the reaction or enzymes they are only responsible for increasing the speed of the reaction so here thermodynamics it is responsible for regulating the direction of the reaction is it clear thermodynamics is responsible for regulating the direction of the reaction but whereas enzymes are responsible for increasing the speed of the reaction so here whether the reaction is a forward reaction or backward reaction enzymes are least concerned enzymes are only responsible for enhancing the speed of the reaction so the reason why rate of the chemical reaction it can be elucidated if the direction is specified is it clear and then after here we need to understand one more key point so here the activity of enzymes activity of enzymes remains vary remains vary according to temperature according to temperature that means for every increase of or decrease of 10 degrees celsius to 20 degrees celsius the activity of enzyme it remains vary is it clear and here we need to understand how the specific enzymes they play an important role for increasing the number of product molecules in case of one particular reaction is it clear so let me arrange the things here so here as i have already mentioned you enzymes are responsible for enhancing are responsible for increasing or for enhancing the speed of the reaction speed of the reaction and even the particular enzymes they are responsible for increasing the number of product molecules is it clear enzymes 
आर रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर इंक्रीजिंग द नंबर ऑफ प्रोडक्ट मॉलिक्यूल्स नंबर ऑफ प्रोडक्ट मॉलिक्यूल्स राइट सो लुकेट हियर कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड वेन इट डिजॉल्व इन वॉटर इज इट क्लियर कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड वेन इट डिजॉल्व इन वॉटर इट गिवस रेस्ट टू कार्बनिक एसिड कार्बनिक एसिड सो हियर इन द ऑप्शन ऑफ एंजेम कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड वेन इट डिजॉल्व इन वॉटर इट इज और इट प्रोड्यूस ओनली टू हंड्रेड मॉलिकल्स ऑफ कार्बनिक एसिड सो लेट मी राइट इट ऑन द बोर्ड Absence of enzyme it yields only 200 molecules of 200 molecules of carbonic acid but whereas in the presence of enzyme in the presence of enzyme which is nothing but carbonic anhydrase carbonic anhydrase nearly 600000 molecules of carbonic acid are produced is it clear presence of enzyme it yields nearly 600000 molecules of carbonic acid is it clear so here the product so, so here the number of product molecules it has increased nearly 10 million times in the presence of enzyme in the absence of carbonic anhydrase only 200 molecules of carbonic acid is produced but in the presence of carbonic anhydrase nearly 600000 molecules of carbonic acid is produced that means here the production of carbonic acid it has increased nearly 10 million times in the presence of enzyme so the reason why as i already mentioned you enzymes they are not only responsible for increasing the rate of the chemical reaction and even the particular enzymes they are responsible for increasing the number of product molecules so in case of one particular living organism here we can observe many of the chemical reactions which are catalyzed by taking the advantage of enzymes for example glucose molecule glucose molecule in addition with oxygen it is capable to yield two molecules of pyruvic acid during the glycolysis pathway is it clear and in addition two molecules of water is produced so here we need to understand the specific metabolic pathway under aerobic conditions the specific glycolysis under aerobic conditions oxidation of glucose molecule under aerobic conditions oxidation of glucose molecule it yields two molecules of pyruvic acid two molecules of pyruvic acid under aerobic conditions but under anaerobic conditions that means in the absence of oxygen under anaerobic conditions oxidation of glucose molecule it yields two molecules of lactic acid oxidation of glucose molecule under anaerobic condition it yields two molecules of lactic acid so the reason why in general when we perform any physical exercise the size of the bicep it increases enormously because of what because of the accumulation of lactic acid in case of skeletal muscles under anaerobic conditions then in the same way in case of certain living organisms like saccharomyces cerevisiae or yeast the oxidation of glucose molecule it yields a specific molecule which is nothing but what ethanol or alcohol and in addition carbon dioxide is produced and the specific mechanism and the specific process here it is termed as what fermentation in case of yeast oxidation of glucose molecule 
oxidation of glucose molecule it yields ethanol or alcohol and in addition carbon dioxide is produced so here we need to understand one key point in case of all the conditions in case of all the aerobic conditions and as well as anaerobic conditions here the specific metabolic pathway it is very similar so here the oxidation of glucose molecule it has took place but here the specific product which has formed under various conditions it remains vary under aerobic conditions two molecules of pyruvic acid is produced under anaerobic conditions two molecules of lactic acid is produced it is because of what it is because of the participation of various intermediates because of the participation of various intermediates in case of the specific metabolic pathway here the specific product which has formed it has remained vary is it clear and then after we will be studying regarding how the specific enzymes are capable to accelerate the rate of the chemical reaction so let me arrange the things here so here as i have already mentioned you enzymes are responsible for enhancing the rate of the reaction and as we all know enzymes are proteinaceous in nature once when the specific enzyme when it acquires the tertiary structure the specific polypeptide chain it is capable to fold so accurately and the specific enzymes which are proteinaceous in nature it acquires a specific crevice like structure or pocket like structure and here the specific crevice like structure or pocket like structure here it is termed as what active site to the active site of the enzyme a specific compound termed as substrate it successfully binds so here once when the specific substrate when it successfully binds to the active site of the enzyme now here it lead to the formation of what enzyme substrate complex is it clear so let us we assume it as the enzyme to the specific enzyme a particular substrate it successfully binds at the active site so here it is nothing but what substrate so once when the specific substrate when it successfully binds to the active site of the enzyme now here it lead to the formation of what enzyme substrate complex enzyme substrate complex enzyme substrate complex it further it turns into what enzyme product complex enzyme product complex and at the end the product is successfully formed product is formed so the reason why here symbolically substrate it gives rise to what product is it clear now let us we have a look the relationship between the enzyme and as well as the substrate how the specific enzyme it is capable to remain in association with the specific substrate and how the specific enzyme it is capable to accelerate the rate of the chemical reaction so here as i have already mentioned you all the enzymes they has a specific crevice like structure which is nothing but what active site to the active site of the enzyme once when the specific substrate when it successfully binds initially the specific enzyme substrate complex it reaches to a specific transition state is it clear once when the substrate when it successfully binds to the active site of the enzyme now here it lead to the formation of what enzyme substrate complex so here after the formation of enzyme substrate complex now the specific enzyme substrate complex it reaches to a higher energy state which is nothing but what transition state and the particular transition state it is highly unstable so here always try to memorize one thing when the specific compounds when they remain at the lower energy state they are much more stable in comparison with the specific compounds which are at higher energy state always the compounds which they remain at the lower energy state they are much more stable in comparison with the specific compounds which remain at the higher energy state so the reason why within no time the specific enzyme substrate complex from the transition state it reaches in order to form a specific product is it clear after the successful formation of enzyme substrate complex it reaches to the transition state and the particular transition state it is highly unstable so the reason why within no time the specific enzyme substrate complex it is capable to yield the product so here we need to understand one key point so here nearly in case of all the spontaneous reactions in case of all the spontaneous reactions are exergonic reaction here the specific product which has formed always it remains at the bottom 
Is it clear? Always the specific product which has formed in case of the spontaneous reactions are exergonic reactions. It remains at the lower level in comparison with the substrate. The product P, it remains at the lower level in comparison with the substrate. So here you may get a small clarification. Why in case of the spontaneous reactions are exergonic reactions? The specific product, it remains at the lower level in comparison with the substrate. So here the answer to this question is very simple because all the spontaneous reactions they are exergonic and in addition to this nature always favors only to the spontaneous reactions is it clear all the spontaneous reactions are exergonic and in addition nature always favors only the spontaneous reactions all the spontaneous reactions they are energy independent process so here in order to understand this particular concept let me give you some common examples so that easily we can understand for example if we consider ice cubes right so here once when we place the ice cubes in water the specific ice cubes they are capable to dissolve in water they are capable to dissolve in water but never and ever water it is capable to convert into ice cubes at room temperature is it clear ice cubes they are capable to convert into water at room temperature but never and ever water turns into ice cubes at room temperature so here why what is the reason behind because here the transformation of energy it has took place from higher energy state to the lower energy state so the reason why never and ever water is capable to convert into ice cubes at room temperature then in the same way if we consider a paper paper right paper is composed of many number of organic compounds so once when we burn the paper so here all the organic compounds they are capable to liberate the heat in the presence of oxygen and that ultimately the ash is formed here is it clear so always paper turns into ash but never and ever ash turns into paper so with this what we can conclude or what we can predict is nature always favors only the spontaneous reactions are exergonic reactions and in addition the specific spontaneous reactions are exergonic reactions here the transformation of energy takes place from higher energy state to the lower energy state so the reason why in case of all the spontaneous reactions are exergonic reaction the product p it remains at the lower level in comparison with the substrate and in addition to this here we need to understand the specific nature it not only favors the spontaneous reaction and in addition nature always favors entropy or disorder so let me write it on the board nature always favors entropy or disorder so here in order to understand why nature always favors only entropy or disorder here we can take the advantage of one common example so here let us be consider paper again so here initially the particular paper it is having some dimensions it is having some particular length and as well as breadth so here once when we burn the paper here paper turns into what ash initially the particular paper it is having some dimensions it is having some particular length and as well as breadth but once when we burn the paper paper turns into ash so here once when the ash is formed all the dimensions of the paper they have disappeared or they have vanished so here paper is nothing but what order paper is nothing but what order but whereas the ash which has formed it is nothing but what disorder or entropy so with this here we can conclude that nature always favors only entropy or disorder and in addition to this here we need to understand that whether the specific reaction it is a spontaneous reaction or non spontaneous reaction initially the particular enzyme when it remains in association with substrate it reaches to a specific higher energy state which is nothing but what transition state the specific transition state it is highly unstable highly unstable so the reason why the specific enzyme substrate complex within no time it is capable to yield the product is it clear the specific enzyme substrate complex when it reaches to the transition state which is highly unstable within no time the enzyme substrate complex it is capable to yield enzyme product complex and from the enzyme product complex product it successfully forms here is it clear 
So here we need to understand how the specific enzymes are capable to accelerate the rate of reaction. So here enzymes are capable to accelerate the rate of reaction by lowering the activation energy. So if we look at here, this particular reaction it has took place in the absence of enzyme. So the reason why the activation energy it has increased. But here this particular reaction it has took place in the presence of enzyme. So the reason why the activation energy it has decreased. So here always enzymes are capable to accelerate the rate of reaction by lowering the activation energy. So let me write it on the board. Enzymes accelerate the rate of reaction by lowering activation energy activation energy so here you make it a small clarification what is the advantage by lowering the activation energy so here the advantage it is in association with what time factor so here in the absence of enzyme it has took a lot of time for the conversion of enzyme substrate complex into product but in the presence of enzyme it has took very less time for the successful conversion of enzyme substrate complex into product is it clear so in this way the particular enzymes they are responsible for enhancing the rate of the chemical reaction and then after we will be studying regarding nature of enzyme action so let me arrange the things here and if we look at the nature of enzyme action so initially the particular enzyme during the tertiary structure it acquires a specific crevice like structure or pocket like structure which is nothing but what active site to the specific active site of the enzyme substrate it successfully binds so here once when the substrate when it successfully binds to the active site of the enzyme it lead to the formation of what enzyme substrate complex enzyme substrate complex right es complex is it clear and here the specific enzyme substrate complex it is successfully formed because of what because of the breaking of chemical bonds and as well as the forming of chemical bonds in between the enzyme active site and as well as the substrate and within no time enzyme substrate complex it is capable to yield enzyme product complex is it clear and from the enzyme product complex enzyme plus product complex is obtained product complex is obtained so once when the specific product when it is successfully obtained here now the specific enzyme with its active site again it is ready to participate in one more other chemical reaction is it clear so here this is regarding nature of bond linking and as well as structure of enzymes and as well as the chemical reactions in detail and in the next upcoming video session we will be studying regarding classification and nomenclature of enzymes in detail so here i hope that this video will help you a lot so if you like this video just hit the like button and share it to your friends thank you